Love and Light. This is Healthy Talk Show for Tuesday, October 15th, 2019. I'm Robert. And I'm Marissa. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support if you want to help financially produce the show. Our show is value for value. So if you find value in our content, please provide some back. HealthyTalkShow.com slash support. Show notes for this episode with everything we talk about will be located over at HealthyTalkShow.com forward slash 24. On this episode of Healthy Talk Show, we're looking at somewhat called the humanitarian crisis on the West Coast. But first, in Gadget, on the Chemistry Nobel Prize. Today, the Chemistry Prize was revealed, and the winners are three scientists who have spent decades developing lightweight lithium ion batteries. They are M. Stanley Whittingham, Akira Yoshino, and John B. Goodenough. Yes, that's his name. In a sense, this announcement feels both long overdue and somehow very timely all at the same time. Mr. Whittingham's work dates back to the oil crisis of the early 1970s, with Good Enough and Yoshino's contributions starting in the 80s. You have them to thank for everything from your smartphone batteries to your laptop batteries. You get the idea. This recognition feels belated. It's worth noting that the battery research community has been putting forward its pioneering scientists before the Nobel Committee for several years now. By now, Mr. Whittingham and Mr. Yoshino are each in their 70s, and Mr. Good Enough is 97, oh my making gosh. him the oldest Nobel Prize winner. 97. Oh, I'm surprised he wasn't dead, <sighs> dude. Because once you die, you can't win that anymore. Yeah, so, you know, it's... <laughs> like, dang, it's, no I'm, Yeah. Now, now I can see why people yeah. say he's a little overdue. He's overdue. It's 90, yeah. Yeah. Not only did he live to see his work recognized in this way while he was still with us, but he is still active in the research community. That's Very, cool. That's cool. And, you know, because some of these Nobel Prize winners like to go and then get jobs at multiple universities where they're collecting four or five paychecks. <laughs> it doesn't really seem right. So a 97-year-old getting it, good, good on yeah. you, man. Good on you. Yeah. Plus, I mean, we, we all know the importance of battery technology. Yep. And people don't realize, I mean, there's so much work that's done. So, so few scientists get recognized by the Nobel Prize. So yeah, it's really hard to say, oh, they should have gone in earlier. Yeah. <laughs> Some people are complaining because there are no women this time around, yeah. which sucks. I get it. But it is so historical because our yeah. work went back decades. So. And batteries were, damn, everything's yeah. using batteries, even cars, lithium ion batteries. Yeah. So it's what it is. Now under our main topic, KPX5 CBS, Trump slams California's nation's hub of homelessness. Yeah, Alan, President Trump dropped, dropping that jarring statistic during his campaign last night, saying that half of all unsheltered Americans live in the state of California. So we checked, and he's right. But we wanted to know why. Why are so many people living on the streets in California? At a campaign rally in Ohio, President Trump said Democrats can't be trusted to run the government. He cited San Francisco as an example. The conditions in Nancy Pelosi's once great city of San Francisco are deplorable. They're deplorable. He also said California is not housing its homeless. Nearly half of all the homeless people living in the streets in America happen to live in the state of California. What they are doing to our beautiful California is a disgrace to our country. It's a shame. The world is looking at it. According to the... Very, very dramatic, as Trump yeah. usually likes to be. Very dramatic. But. 2018 homeless assessment report by the Department of Housing and Urban Development, 47% of all unsheltered people live in California. The unsheltered are homeless people who are not in shelters or temporary housing. So when the president says nearly half of all homeless people living Wait, on the street, President's claim. Oh, I like that. Yeah. <laughs> Which, it's actually in the report. Yeah, it says that. It, it's, and, uh, it's, yeah. It's true, but... Yeah. Uh, Sorry, I just thought it was weird that he's claim. Yeah, well, they're also surprised that the president makes a claim that's correct, which is uh, another, speaks to their bias, but we won't get into that. Live in California, <laughs> he's right. According to the- He's right. Shocking. Shocking. He's right. The president's right. Yeah. Oh my gosh, the president's right about something. Oh, we're so surprised. I know. Report the total number of people is about 90,000. Governor Newsom says he welcomes the federal government's ideas and resources. If you've got a critique, offer some advice and counsel on solutions. And if you have advice and counsel on solutions, also provide resources. 
Governor Newsom also said HUD is slashing funding for housing, and that's an issue also brought up by Jeff Kaczynski. He's the director of San Francisco's Department of Homelessness and Supportive Housing. Since 1978, the federal government has cut HUD's budget authority for low-income housing by well over 50 percent in current dollars, and I think that cut has really tracks the rise of modern-day homelessness. He says the funding cuts hit California especially hard because it is also very difficult to build here. I think we need to figure out ways to streamline housing construction. We need to look at our, our zoning laws. We need to look at our you know investments in uh, affordable housing. Yeah, good luck. Yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll talk more about that later, but they're really not addressing, yeah, it is extremely hard to build in California. Extremely difficult. <laughs> we actually have more on yeah, that. Yeah, we have more numbers. I want to look at the HUD report first, just yeah. a few slides here that we've got from the HUD report. So you can see for yourself, nearly half of all uncheltered people in the country were in California, 47% or 89,543. The state to the next largest number of people experiencing homelessness in unsheltered locations was Florida with 7% of the U.S. total, 13,393 people. Now that is crazy. Yes, <laughs> that is not good. And of course, unsheltered homeless and homeless. Homeless describes a person who lacks fixed, regular, or adequate nighttime residence. Unsheltered homeless refers to people whose primary nighttime location is a public or private place not designated for or ordinarily used as a regular sleeping accommodation for people. For example, the streets, vehicles, or parks. I have another chart here. All right. Demographic characteristics of people experiencing homelessness. And a key point from this, a key finding according to the report, is nearly half of all people experiencing homelessness, 49% or 270,568 people identify their race as white, and nearly 6 in 10 people, 59% experiencing unsheltered homelessness were white, while comprising nearly, comprising nearly half of homeless population, people identifying as white were underrepresented compared to the share of the U.S. population, 72%. African Americans are considerably overrepresented among the homeless population compared to the overall U.S. population, while accounting for 13% of the U.S. population. African Americans account for 40% of all people experiencing homelessness and 51% of people experiencing homelessness as a member of families with children. In contrast, nearly 6 in 10 people experiencing blah, 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 blah. Okay. Yeah. Well, what we found frustrating <clears throat> is as we attempted to dive into these numbers further, is it, yeah, it doesn't give a breakdown. Yeah, they're not there. You can only get the breakdown by county, but not by racial demo. So it's kind of hard to break it down because California would be an interesting case, especially Southern California. Yeah. Because those of you not familiar, it's very diverse. So white is not majority or they're about 50%, I think. So it's. Yeah, it's about 50. So yeah, a little those, different. Those population demographics actually might match California more and might show that homelessness is affecting white people disproportionately yeah. more and black people more while Hispanic people are less comparatively since again in California, they're almost 50% of the population. So yes. And some people, some people would say that homelessness is because of lack of family support and all that. If you look at Hispanic families are usually better on the family. Yeah. So support. that would be, that would be interesting to dive more into. Yep. Back to the HUD data, U S map estimate estimates of homeless people. So you can see it's not, I actually did some numbers myself, so we can look at this pretty map. California, the West Coast has a problem. We yeah. will know that looking at, my, looking at my numbers here. You can go here, states with the highest and lowest yeah. rates of unsheltered these, people. And these this is funny, because New York, and should we play this clip just to, because New York is claiming that they only have 4.7% 4, 4. of un, Yeah, you got a clip for it. I, got a cl I have a clip countering what HUD's reporting, so let's oh, see what HUD... HUD where are we at here? Ba, 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 ba. Well, you know, we kind of think these numbers are full, and we'll go into the that. Of the homeless on the subways is uh. Just one example, this homeless man who awoke from a nap and took out a hammer to threaten terrified passengers. Now with MTA officials stunned by new findings that the number of homeless on the subways have soared, they're unveiling new plans to fix it. Saying a 20% increase in just the last year, 2,200 compared to 1,770 in 2018, is unacceptable. Our customers and our employees deserve a safe and orderly station environment. And 
a safe and orderly subway system. The plan is to use social workers to do outreach, try to convince the homeless to leave the subways and go into shelters. This to be coupled with more cops and more city shelter beds. You're trying to do the same thing in terms of outreach that New York City has tried to do to get the homeless off the streets. They've failed. What makes you think that you're going to succeed? Well, Marsha, I think the best thing to say is that we have to try. I love that answer. You're doing exactly what everyone else is doing. It's not working. So why do you think this is going to work? Yeah. We got to try. Well, got to try. That's a problem. <laughs> I, I guess. It's, but don't like trying the same thing over and over again. Yeah. <laughs> moving on with this clip. They're already underreporting their homeless stats. Oh, yeah. Which... But moving on. Officials do say that the increase in homeless in the subways is disproportionate with the numbers experienced citywide, which is why state officials say it's important for the city to do more to house the homeless. A spokesperson for Mayor de Blasio insists the city has made unprecedented investments in outreach, which has enabled them to move 600 homeless people out of the subways and into transitional and permanent housing. We're squarely focused on taking that progress forward, said the spokesperson. Riders say the homeless problem seriously detracts from the service. Oh, it's pretty bad. It's been bad for years. It's getting worse, actually. This getting man worse. is saying it's been bad for years and it's getting worse. So it's not a new problem. Yeah. I just like, I like that. I like that he said it's been bad for years. He just <laughs> well, says it because he's probably been riding the subway for years and he's seen it getting bad for years. Yeah, everyone's talking about Speaking how it's the getting truth. bad. Yeah. Which is... What's that? I was going to say, uh, we'll have to look at those HUD numbers. Oh, yeah. Seats and they're just all over the place. It makes it unsafe. It's been getting worse, yeah, definitely. I've been seeing a lot of people sleeping on stairs. It affects, you know, how I go when I go to work. Yeah. Yeah. But according to the HUD numbers, do this again, or at least according to this picture, New York, they're doing pretty good. Yeah, they're allegedly housing everybody. Largest changes, just thought California, largest decrease, my ass. Yeah, yeah, <clears throat> right. Because everyone's, everyone's talking about how it's increasing. Yeah, Everyone sees it. Exactly. Oh, we'll, we'll play how people are getting Here fed up. Here is Here are my numbers. Based on HUD's numbers, I just did the population estimates just to show. It's kind of hard to see. It's kind of hard to verbalize, but. Oh, we can see that we have an issue. On the West Coast. Yeah. California, Washington, and Oregon. We have in the unsheltered overall homelessness. It's crazy. They're all... Yeah, Oregon's really high at 0.35% yeah. of the population. That's up there with California. 0.33 California. And New York doesn't look that good nope. at 0. 0.47. Exactly. So they have 91,897 homeless, and their population's 19 million. Yeah, that's... that's but... <laughs> so these numbers are... Well, people aren't addressing the problem that these are the high cost of housing, but mm -hmm. then... If we go into why housing is so expensive, we yep. see the regulations. <laughs> That's what's causing housing to be. It's kind of it's the, the double-edged sword. Yeah. All right. Well, I guess we can go to the CBS Los Angeles report. Yeah. Breaking point. Well, California homelessness crisis. Before we move on, though. Okay. I just don't even know what to say about those numbers because of the report saying that it's going down. Yeah. But, and then we're about to play all these clips where everyone sees how it's getting worse. Mm -hmm. I mean, how can we trust these numbers at all? Yeah. Well, just the unsheltered numbers, which the top. Yeah, I don't know. Now, how do you? I, I, the numbers are false. They're low anyways. Yeah. So that's what's also you count? disturbing and yeah. people aren't addressing as these numbers yeah there are ways that they're trying to chip people and initiatives yeah. to chip people and put them on bracelets and rfid them and it's really i'm trying to get more information about yeah that, i'm not really down with stuff. tracking people but <laughs> it's, it's uh just give them phones solar powered phones <laughs> all right are you ready yes all right clip one examples of homeless committing crimes very dramatic Ooh. Ooh. When did all of this become normal? A homeless camp in the Sepulveda Basin exploding? Flames 50 feet high. It's an extremely hazardous area. In Mar Vista, 
gunmen shooting up a homeless camp. It's just out of control. I'm beginning not to feel safe. In Venice, a man renting a fleet of beat up old vans parked in front of people's homes for the homeless to sleep in. These folks have no place to use the bathroom. In Van Nuys, a homeless man breaking into a store and watching porn on a computer while the family was living upstairs. What did they kill him? Then I grabbed him and slammed him to the ground. In Anaheim, a massive tent city with a secret underground bunker. Anaheim is where Disneyland is, <laughs> y'all didn't know. It's yeah. the Disneyland town, city of Disney. Filled with hundreds of stolen bicycles, above ground, trash, and drugs. I've definitely found needles thrown over our fence a bunch. Hey, thanks for dropping them off. And in San Pedro, a homeless man dumped at a bus stop. This he is was crazy. there by police from another city. I was just appalled. And when did it become acceptable to live in fear? Every right. Like in Garden Grove, where a homeless camp opened in a shopping mall parking lot. We're leaving. It's just, it just feels unsafe. Super frustrated. Many a times they try to sit there and say, can't you just arrest them? doesn't work that way. Or in Mid-City LA, where homeless people brawl in the streets night after night right outside people's homes. My wife is actually uh, scared to go out and walk on the street. Or in Long Beach, where a homeless man beat a woman to death with a scooter. The detective said that was the worst thing he ever seen. Holy moly. Jeez. That's all in the LA area. Yeah. Holy shoot. That is insane. We just, we just moved from that. Yeah, that's... That's part of why we moved out. Yeah. More examples, just really quick. Very <laughs> dramatic. A local tailor is shoved under a moving Ooh. truck. Police say his attacker is this man, Garrett Joseph Bolt, a homeless man. In fact, they say all of these recent random and horrific attacks and dozens more like them were committed by a homeless person. There is no doubt in anybody's mind that this is reached and gone beyond the crisis. The LAPD just started tracking homeless-related crimes. Just started. The LAPD <laughs> just started wow. tracking homeless-related crimes. Let's remember that, because this video yeah. cites a lot of stats, but they don't tell you how long they've been tracking. Yeah, we're Our numbers show violent crimes committed by the homeless jumped nearly 30% in the last year. When they just started tracking. Oh, uh, crap. Security and sanitation. That happened. Tracking homeless related crime. Ooh, good save. Good save. That was a good save. Thank you. <laughs> good save. Good save. Go back. Crimes. Their numbers show violent crimes committed by the homeless jumped nearly 30% in the last year. That was the end of the clip, and some reason it jumped to the next one. Oh. I don't know how that happened. But yeah. yeah. 30%. They jumped 30%. They don't tell you how long they've been tracking them. <laughs> Well, I think a year, so uh, that's, yeah. 30% from zero. <laughs> uh, not too descriptive. But it is, it's... It's a problem. It is dr very dramatic, but it is a problem. And yeah. as the homeless population increases, you're going to get more and more bad apples in there that are going to commit crimes. Here's more on private security. Estela Lopez runs a private security and sanitation patrol in downtown L.A., Hundreds of store owners pay for it because, they say, the city has lost control of the streets. Pro Business owners are paying? Yeah, that's insane to me. But we have an example of a friends in our old city of Riverside that are having similar issues and the police can't do anything. They're non-responsive. They can't do anything. Their yeah, hands are pretty tired. True. It's, it's just unbelievable that your city can't do basic street yeah, maintenance and, anymore. So you have to ha hire somebody <laughs> outside. Prostitution is rampant, human trafficking. If you. Just look at that. That's LA. Yeah. And we Are live not too far from something very similar. Yeah. Charge of this city. When did this become normal? Each week, her crews collect tons of trash, hundreds of needles, and even dead rats. Store owners are fed up. I think uh, we need to get more support from the city because I don't feel they're doing enough. It's a humanitarian crisis. Reverend Andy Bales runs the Union Rescue Mission on Skid Row. They feed and house thousands a day, more than ever. We need to act right now and get people under a roof. We have left so many people on the streets for so long. We have really a devastated generation. Ask him if we're at the breaking point, and he'll tell you, we are way, way past it. 
people are dying. We had almost a thousand people die last year. How can we live with ourselves? <laughs> I'm, I'm not sure we are at the breaking point. We, no. keep, we keep saying we are, and yeah. I feel like we've been saying we're at the breaking mm-hmm. point. We're always at the breaking <laughs> point, but... Yeah. We've got a doctor talking about violence here. Forensic neuropsychologist Dr. Judy Ho believes three factors can lead a homeless person to become violent. The constant stress of trying to survive on the street. Homelessness is a stressor. It can be a traumatizing stressor. The longer they stay there, the more potential they might have to experience other forms of trauma. Pair that with untreated mental illness and possible drug use. If they're also struggling with alcohol and substance use issues, then that really comes into the picture as well because not only does it make certain mental illnesses worse in terms of their presentation, but they won't be able to make good decisions when they're intoxicated. There might be an open delusion they're having, a hallucination that they're having. They will say that in that moment they heard a voice saying that you have to kill this person in front of you. Well, this, and there's no help available. Well, it goes back to how all the mental institutions were shut down mm-hmm. in the 70s, and then there was no local support. Yeah, and we're going to have to go into that a little bit in depth yeah. for the, or maybe an episode or two down the road. Yeah, but... Look into it. During the time that one when One Flew of the Cuckoo's Nest came out, it was kind of a propagandistic film to get a, the public opinion against these mental institutions. So... Basically, the federal government just said, okay, scare, we'll shut them down. Bloop, bloop, shut them down. Yeah, and, and we're not saying that there weren't issues. Oh, but, they're probably, yeah. <laughs> but the vacuum that was left behind, mm-hmm. I think, is now we're yeah, seeing it in the Yeah, and we homeless. can't leave the Middle East because there's going to be a vacuum. Yeah. But we can leave our people on the streets. Okay, Precisely. cool. Precisely. Good job. Good job, America. Uh, violent crimes against homeless. It's a... Uh, and without Sick. shelter, more and more, the homeless are becoming victims. Violent crimes against the homeless is up nearly 37% from this time last year. Again, they just started tracking stuff. Yeah. So it's, it, but it is, I, I, it's probably worse. The violent, the crimes against the homeless are probably worse than the homeless committing the crimes. Yeah. Because, because they're being taken advantage of. Oh, yeah. There are people. I was going to say, you're the one that told me that the shelters are also very dangerous. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm not the one that I the one that has been told that by yeah. people that have lived in shelters. That's why I don't like being in shelters. Yeah. So that's another thing yeah. that I, you never hear about. People out there who are victimizing these homeless people. They understand the nature of the condition. They understand the vulnerable position that they're in. The gangs run Skid Row. The Reverend Andy Bales of Union Rescue Mission says gangs use drugs, violence, and sex to control the most vulnerable demographic. Gang enterprise, drug trafficking, sex trafficking, backed by violence. Women dressing up as men to avoid an assault. Men are being assaulted. People are dying. Violence against the homeless, violence committed by the homeless getting much worse with devastating results. The longer we leave people on the streets, the more danger all of us are in. A little dramatic, but still. Yeah, it's dramatic. But it's the truth. Yeah, it's creating a divide. Yeah. People are walking over the homeless and... Yeah, and people don't care because it's homeless on homeless violence. So, and what's the solution? California's solution: affordable housing. How's that going in Pasadena? Let's see. It has to be tackled. It is a legitimate crisis in the state. We're losing the middle class. Governor Newsom is pushing cities to build 3.5 million new homes in six years. But some say that's impossible because of a standoff in California now between the haves and the have-nots. Right now, you've got a large number of very wealthy single-family homeowners who feel no sense of obligation to the next generation to build more housing. It's almost as if they've got theirs and they're pulling up the ladder. Richard McDonald represents a developer who wants to turn this vacant office building on South Los Robles Avenue in Pasadena into condos. Sounds simple enough, right? The planning department and the city manager approved the project. Then it came here to Pasadena City Hall for public comment and a final vote by the city council. And that's when this project ran into a buzzsaw. You cannot move this project forward till you have ensured our community's safety and livability. We kind of feel that our neighborhood is under attack. We, we have massive development from all sides. I am just basically terrified. 
Why are people angry? Pasadena wanted to restrict the building to five stories and 70 units, with six units reserved for lower income families. But under a new state law designed to encourage more housing, the developer could build six stories and 91 units if he built eight lower income units. One more story for just two more low income units. This kind of sounds like the state's uh, pushing initiatives down Pasadena's yeah. throat and they don't like it. For context, Pasadena is full of a bunch of rich people. Yeah. In California. Very, very rich area. Very rich area. I wouldn't even, I've, ne I've only been there and I've lived next to Pasadena my entire life and I've been there once because it's such a rich area. You just drive into it, you feel, woo wee. I'm scared. <laughs> very, uh. Yeah, but it, it's very interesting too because it is a college town. There are actually two colleges there. Mm -hmm. And so it makes me wonder. You know, where do those students live? Because I, I know from personal experience, it is very expensive there. Pasadena is expensive. So, I don't know. You always need a balance. Yeah, but they don't want to give up on the balance. But these, it's, well, let's continue. Neighbors hated the deal. We've paid a lot of money to live here. We've raised our family here. This is our community. I am not going to cry. This is totally the haves versus the have not. The opposition came mostly from people who live here, in the city's Madison Heights neighborhood. Tree-lined, single-family, multi-million dollar homes. After a contentious hearing that went well past midnight, the council voted to kill the project, defying state law. So the developer now plans to sue the city for violating state law. Mayor says the real issue here is the state trying to bigfoot cities. He says Pasadena has built more than its fair share of dense and affordable <laughs> housing and says this is not about nimbyism, but a clumsy state power grab. Very yeah. interesting. Sorry, I'm, I'm wondering what uh, their fair share of affordable housing yeah, means. Yeah, that's... <laughs> it's, let's see some numbers. Right, and they, they didn't put any stats of income level or anything. Yeah, but, but it is. It's the affordable housing scam in California right now. These big developers and construction companies, and we'll see this throughout this clip. I'm just trying to talk over my dogs barking right now. They just take this government money and run with it. They put up yes. these apartment complexes, but they don't actually try to help people. <laughs> so it's, yeah. oh, here's a structure. Good go. Instead, let's just, you know, how about we try to help people instead? Help them become productive members of society? Housing somebody does not necessarily mean they're going to become a productive member of society yeah. or help them at all. Yeah. They just bring their friends over and say, come on, we got a free house. <laughs> Plus, you can already see the waste that's going on suing. Where does that money come from to sue each other? Your tax dollars? Yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, so now... now Counties uh, sue cities. Cities sue counties. Cities sue states. States. It's Yes. <laughs> it's all taxpayer money. Yeah. Who gets screwed? Who gets screwed in the end? Ultimately, the poor people... Yes. ...who... The, the, the money, the, low. the money that was supposed to help them, is now just being wasted on legal fees. <laughs> exactly. And and we'll see where else the waste goes because I don't want to spoil everything. Moving on. In Koreatown, thousands marched in the streets to block his plans for an emergency shelter in Council President Herb Wesson's district. Hearings at City Hall turned to shouting matches. You need to stop pushing it down our throat. Oh my God, we're driving past homeless people and we're not seeing them. After five months, both sides have finally agreed on a site. Not in hold on, hold on. And in Venice, hundreds push back on a shelter there. It will be built, but months behind schedule. The mayor calls them bridge shelters, trailers and tent compounds placed on city-owned land. This is the first one near Alvera Street, <laughs> downtown. Social workers, food, and beds for about 80 people. The mayor promised last year dozens would be open by now. So far, only four of these facilities have opened with 220 beds, and they have 36,000 homeless people. Of those four that are open, they've been runaway successes. Prime's gone. I love it. Yeah. We're, we're, not, we're not up to par, but we're doing well. <laughs> I don't, what is a runaway success? Yeah, what's a, why do you measure that? What are the metrics? Does, does that mean that just a bunch of people flooded <laughs> yeah. the shelter because there it's are over, only four of them? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> but okay. That's... Runaway success. <laughs> Down. And they're providing a solution in those neighborhoods. And I guarantee you that you will see another 20 of those open in the next 12 months. Yeah, bullshit. Yeah, we'll, we'll see. Uh, 
Well, we'll check back in a few months. With yeah. You. <laughs> LA's mo- LA mayor's most expensive plan. By far, the mayor's most expensive plan is to build something called permanent supportive housing. Shelters like this one going up near Skid Row. Individual rooms, mental health, addiction treatment, health care. Three years ago, voters approved a $1.2 billion tax hike to build... $1.2 billion tax hike. Holy... F- yeah. $1.2 billion. Where'd that money go? 10,000 units. But instead of 10,000, L.A. will only build about half that number. <laughs> Construction has become so expensive, half a million dollars per room, the city is running out of money. Oh, my get gosh. You on record saying the money that we do have to spend it in a more efficient way? I think it's a misconception. We've got 110 projects, fully funded, broken ground, or, and or about to open. Permit supportive housing doesn't get built right. in three months. But the city council has now stepped in, taking the last 100 million left in the fund to build cheaper, faster shelters using things like shipping containers. The mayor insists his plans are working. They just need more time and more money and more support from L.A. County, the state, and the feds. This fight requires that we stick with this, that we not lose our momentum, that we not lose our commitment. If we don't all take this on, we can point fingers about who caused it, who's responsible, but it won't get solved without all of us together. Yeah, it won't get solved. We need more money because we we don't know how to manage funds properly. Yeah. So we need more. Well, I like how they were more more efficient with the last... Yeah, Bit we're gonna money. yeah we're gonna do better this time. We blew through the mo- majority of it, but now we're good. Yeah. Last hundred million, we're good. <sighs> and then this piece has Lo- Long Beach saying that oh yeah, Long Beach, it's you know it's doing something different, but it doesn't really dive After into too much. Increase last year, there are now nearly sixty thousand homeless people in LA County. In contrast, Long Beach, with a population of nearly 500,000 people, they only saw a 2% increase. It's improving because there's a lot of resources out there. So what are they doing that everyone else isn't? I sat down with Mayor Robert Garcia to find out. How are you doing it? And what are you doing exactly to make it work? We are in no way reactive to the homelessness challenge in Long Beach. We're very proactive. It is on top of mind every single day at City Hall. I think we're certainly getting a lot right. And it's not that there aren't folks that are experiencing homelessness here, because there are. I think first is building housing that's affordable uh, for seniors, for low-income families, and that's hard to do. We're also implementing a variety of protections to help people stay in their homes. We have a street outreach network that goes out and engages people in the community that may not have come to the center on their own. It helped out for a lot of people. That's a need. Uh-huh. You know, and I'm a need. And in Long Beach, the On the Street Outreach Network has a wide net. The fire department has formed the Heart Team. The police department has the Quality of Life Team. And they both work hand in hand with the Health and Human Services Department. We always want to make sure as we're engaging the homeless population that we're doing two main things, which is offering resources and making sure we're doing the proper referrals so we can adequately meet the needs of each person we engage on the street. So we're talking about collaborative efforts. Yeah, so that's pretty cool. It's but it's cool. <laughs> yeah, El, El Long Beach is not far away from Los Angeles proper, and they've got issues. Plus, I would like to know a few yeah. more details because they kind of give a cherry view of oh, we're all working together mm-hmm. and it's great. But in Long Beach, yeah, there's a lot of money in Long Beach. Yeah, it's quite a bit of money out there. So. Plus, we've always heard about uh, cities busing to neighboring cities. Mm-hmm. Beach cities. Yeah. Busing to inland cities in Southern California. High cost of housing the homeless. This is put out by the LA city controller. Very dramatic. I'm going to voice over it a little yeah. bit because there is nothing. And this is very interesting, too, because these are their numbers. And they're, yeah. they're le- releasing this report. They and are. Showing how much money is going into this. Yep. So let's take a look. The high cost of housing, homeless housing, a review of Proposition HHH. I can't see that. At least 36,000 people experience homelessness in the city of Los Angeles. And to you in the chat, where I'm from, Long Beach has money, my friend. So you might want to shut your mouth there, buddy. 
That's the last interaction you get. 75% lack shelter each night. In November 2016, voters approved Proposition HHH, authorizing the city to issue $1.2 billion in bonds. 10,000 supportive housing units to partially subsidize 10,000 supportive housing units to house the homeless. Supportive housing combines housing with on-site services like job training, health, or, and mental health assistance, and addiction treatment. While projects are underway, three years after voters approve HHH, not even a fraction of the housing needed exists. High construction costs and a slow approval process have hampered the city's ability to house people in need. 2016 estimate units will start opening in 2018 for rent. 2019 reality. Zero units open oh as of October God. 2019. 117 units scheduled to open this year. That is bad. 2016 cost estimate. Each unit will cost between $350,000 and $414,000. 2019 reality costs skyrocketed to $531,000 per unit and as much as $700,000. So stop for a second. Yes. Because something that they, this is the price of building it, correct? Yes. Because that's how they've explained it. They haven't explained how they're going to also afford to maintain it yeah maintain <laughs> that's that is and that is that is the funniest thing because that's a lot of people don't factor that in when they talk about budgets at the housing authority i used to work at we acquired condos without thinking about maintenance costs without thinking about maintaining the cost we acquired condos with hoa fees thinking how the hell we're we gonna pay hoa fees that is crazy. how do we do this what yeah, is because you, you only make they so much money in think. rent <laughs> they Which, don't think yeah that is insane absolutely as much as I'm the median sell price of a condo in the city of LA is $546,000 yeah, so now I have another question too okay so they're building these small rooms $300,000 mm -hmm. and that's not including the cost of maintenance yeah why aren't they building them big houses you could you could make giant mansions instead well <laughs> yeah yeah somewhere else What can be done? According to LA, con let's see. To reduce the cost and prevent future delays, Controller Galpern's HHA report urges the city to consider these recommendations. <music> Examine whether funding for high cost projects can be repurposed for <laughs> use in lower cost uh -huh. projects. Wow, I love it. Streamline the permitting process, hire more staff, and ensure quicker development timelines. The most prudent way to forward is to evaluate what the city can do to maximize Prop HHH dollars and create more quality units as quickly as possible. Yeah, and that, well, my other pro problem with this is what their solution will be to hire an auditor. Yes, of course. <laughs> That's <laughs> yes. I think that's the end of the slides. Yeah. Well, that's what I worked at the County of Riverside. We hired an auditing firm for $40 million to come in and tell us how to spend money more efficiently. Yeah. How to be more efficient. It's amazing. <laughs> and, and then they wonder why they waste money. That's yes. what's frustrating. Absolutely. And then uh, do we have a clip about the contractors or do you just want to speak about? Well, I've, Actually, I think we can move on past this. I don't think there's anything else to speak of. It's just mismanagement of funds and well, you were huge. saying how contractors it's a contracting real estate a scam. Money. Oh yeah, they do. Contractor developers. This is how the affordable housing scam that's taking place in California. They get a lot of money, millions, lots of yeah. money. There's money everywhere. They're building these apartment complexes all over the place. Yeah, and they're wasting taxpayer dollars. Yes. They're wasting it on consulting fees, which mm -hmm. the slides didn't show, but his report mentions 
that yeah. that's the majority of yeah. the I it's think all land, the consulting land yeah. was what seventeen percent because their they're budget? getting so they're collecting the money from the taxpayers. Then they're regulating themselves as far as building codes and all. It doesn't. Yeah. It's illogical. When we were when I was in the you know lightly involved in development, we were we would fight against cities sometimes trying to get housing put. Why? <laughs> Precisely. <laughs> it's and then oh, it's a legal battle. We're going to sue you now. Yeah, we're going to sue each other. And and we we mentioned Pasadena and the Cliffs, but mm-hmm. you've also experienced other neighborhoods like Jerupa Valley. You Harupa talk, Valley. Uh, sorry, Harupa Valley. If you want to talk yeah. about, well, that was a little different actually. That well, was, well, they still don't. That was a developer trying to buy some land and then put up some affordable housing, and then the city said, no, 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 we're not going to do, it. we're not going to do it because the locals didn't want any kind of apartment complex, even though Harupa Valley is not an upper scale area but even you know they they don't want apartment complexes there too they're like a farming community guys i think that's the push is yeah they want more just single family farm style and and i get that people paid a premium to live there i get Mm -hmm. that but again there has to be a balance you have all these people and you have a lot of people and then all these regulations and now it costs so much to build housing that it's kind of creating its own crisis in some ways yeah Yep. It's even a crisis in Austin, though. Yeah. Austin's homeless strategy officer leaves very quickly. Pilo Harris started in September as the city's homeless strategy officer. Um, and then the last element that I would say is having um, our community um, begin to really know and understand that this is a complex issue and it's a long path that's ahead of us. She was hired to help out council with its strategies for tackling homelessness. Her last job was a senior advisor on homelessness and social services in Orlando, Florida, where she helped reduce the homeless population by nearly 24% in one year. I know what the other side looks like and I'm completely convinced and I have the utmost optimism that with all the elements that we currently have, that there is a path forward. But a little- a little more than a month in, Assistant City Manager Rodney Gonzalez told Mayor Adler and the City Council in a letter that her role is changing from full-time city employee to a consultant with the city. Must be nice. Converting yeah. over that fast? Doesn't it take a city a long time to hire people usually? But yeah. you can convert over that fast? Wow, that's nice. She'll still be able to involve and to be able to provide leadership on those really critical um, efforts. Kathy Tobo is the council member representing District 9. She said the letter was a little unexpected, but not worrisome. Oh no, absolutely not. You know, we've taken some good strides and I think having Lori involved in our efforts moving forward is going to be important um, in addition to you know, the other the other really valuable resources we have on staff. The letter says the change has to do with Pampilo Harris's family obligations. Pampilo Harris said in a statement, I am committed to ending homelessness in Austin. While it is true that due to family obligations, I will no longer be serving as a city employee, I will continue to perform many of the same functions in a consulting capacity. Mm. And that work will still continue. Yeah. How much money is she getting? <sighs> it's just, <laughs> she's just she's taken away from helping the homeless. I, I'm again. sorry, I have yes. to... Bring yeah. that up, because precisely. I'm committed to helping the homeless, but I still want my paycheck. Yeah. That's <sighs> sad. It's frustrating. I guess we can round off with what's going on in San Francisco. Because California is, as we've shown. Yeah, they're bad. at the... People are starting to reach their breaking yeah, point. San Francisco might be worse than LA. I don't know. It's a smaller it's, geographical <laughs> area. So maybe yeah. it is worse, because LA, you can at least, you know... Let's see how some residents are dealing with the issue. The people on this street in San Francisco got so fed up with all the late night noise and drug dealing on the sidewalk that some people, no one saying who, decided to take matters into their own hands. 25 large boulders have been placed along the sidewalk on the 200 block of a quiet street called Clinton Park. Neighbors say before the rocks, this sidewalk was crowded with tents and meth dealing and use went on all night long. And people would come in the morning, set up a tent, get the dope, which often happened starting in the morning, and then they would set up, shoot up, and either break it down or stay for a day or two. Neighbors say they lodged more than 300 complaints with the city in the last three months before finally taking up a collection to buy the boulders, which at least so far has worked, which puts officials in a tough spot. They don't want the drug dealing to return either, but the rocks were placed here without the city's knowledge or approval. In terms of public safety and a hazard, there's not a hazard with them. That said, these are public sidewalks and we want to see what, if anything, could be done to legalize them if someone wants to go through that process. Hmm. 
The city says it may be possible that this could be permitted and that the rocks could stay, but it's hard to do that when no one will come forward to admit having put them here. Don't come forward. Yeah. Follow up in a second on that clip. People are very upset. Taking matters in their own hands, brought in some boulders. Well, can neighbors say it wasn't just the homeless? They say it was rampant drug dealing, fights, noises at all hours of the night, needles in their backyard that caused them to go to the city to try and board this alleyway up. As you can see behind me, those walls are down tonight. This is Ingleside Pathway, a four foot wide stretch of walking path between Ocean Avenue and Urbano. The narrow strip of concrete and steps is now home to the latest San Francisco battle between public space and private safety and security. One neighbor who asked not to be identified handed over this video of shouting and screaming on the path in the middle of the day. We quit walking. Yeah. I used to use that pathway all the yeah, time, you, but we quit walking. We quit, on, yeah, we quit using it when the, the homeless guy started using it. The 911 and 311 calls were documented by neighbors, and with permission from the Department of Public Works, the pathway was boarded off. These photos from the examiner show a literal wall built to keep drug dealers, homeless people, and excrement out. I was surprised to see it. This is not the first time San Francisco neighbors have tried to take steps. Uh -oh. Back to the rocks. Their own to keep the homeless out. Boulders were placed <laughs> on a sidewalk in Clinton Park. They were later removed by the city. Uh, that is That sad. is frustrating. Because the, the money to remove yeah. them, you just took away money from the issue. How, how much did those people pay to put those boulders there? No. Yeah, oh you just God. wasted money. Ah. Uh, the same thing happened here with the Ingleside wall. The fencing was torn down after other neighbors complained. You can still see some of the newer wood frame of the fence up on Urbano. For now, the path is once again open while neighbors seek a more permanent solution where there are no easy answers. My heart just break on this. I don't know what to do. On All I could think of was cameras. Cameras. Cameras don't do anything. This pathway, whose backyards abut this pathway. Many of them did not want to talk to us, did not want to go on camera. One gave a statement saying, we understand that California has a big homeless problem. They are we are willing to shoulder some of that burden, but we have to prioritize public safety as well. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating. Because <laughs> nothing ever gets resolved. It's just this impasse. Yeah, and it's just this just keeps going back and forth. This circle, yeah. circle jerk. Money just going around, not helping people. That's true. Not helping people that actually need it. All right, well, we're done with talking about our ready to talk about value for value and why it's so yeah. important and why you don't want corporations <laughs> controlling your entertainment. Well, at least I wouldn't. Yeah. I don't think you want corporations controlling your media, your entertainment, especially <laughs> well, your information. Yeah. Let's look at Jericho and see how the corporations are treating him. Twitch streamer Jericho. One of the few companies that I've been like, hey, would you guys... He had a brand deal. I'm going to set this up. He had a brand deal with McDonald's. A little yeah. intro thing. He's a good streamer. But Twitch loves him. He had a brand deal with McDonald's, a little pilot stream thing to do some ad deal with McDonald's, and let's see what happened with him. Uh -uh. They did. They did last year. I think for the hundredth anniversary of the Whopper, the fiftieth anniversary. The Whopper. Of the Whopper. The Whopper. Year, On his McDonald's sponsored stream, he's uh, saying the oh, Whopper. Oh no! They sent me this, which is a which is a case of one hundred gold Whopper coins, <laughs> which uh, I can redeem anywhere at any time. But at Burger King or McDonald's? No, they're <laughs> no, no, they're Big Mac coins. Uh, he he just okay. said the wrong name. They're actually Big Mac coins. <laughs> so that's what makes even yeah. Oh no! Yeah, oh, yeah. So he catches himself. Anyways, I mean, I'm a, I'm a big, I'm a Big Mac. I said Whopper. I'm so. Oh, you can see it in his eyes. He says, "Oh, I'm fucked." Yeah. Poor guy. I feel bad. Uh, sorry, it's, big it's really. It looks bad. It's painful. Somebody said. Somebody said yikes. Somebody said, somebody said it in the chat, and I read it, and then I just roll with it. Hey, let's start over. Oh, no. <laughs> Welcome to the live stream. Uh, and then his second slip up during his McDonald's sponsored stream. Red Robin when? Yeah, we should probably switch to a little Red Robin. 
Sorry, I'm just going with. <laughs> Did he realize how bad he screwed up that one, too? No, I, I wonder. <laughs> you know, he's singing so well, too. Red, Red Robin. Robin. I love Red Robin. <laughs> their bacon blue, their blue ribbon burger is fantastic. Yeah. A little bacon on that sucker. Make it bacon blue ribbon. Mm. Mm. Plus, they do GF buns, gluten free. Yeah, McDonald's does not. Yeah. All right. And he explains what happened. And it's oh, just, man. it talks to why you don't want these corporations controlling your media. Because now this, he, yeah, he's, he's been silenced. Yeah. Um, and it was the first time that McDonald's was working with Twitch in that capacity. And they were using me as the poster boy for it. And, um, and McDonald's was um, very, 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 very upset. That was a lot of varies. Very, 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 very <laughs> upset. Very, 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 very upset. Who else is very, 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 very upset? <laughs> um, to the point where there was legal issues involved. Oh. <laughs> um, and Twitch's higher-ups that got that campaign were very, 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 very upset as well. <laughs> and uh, as a result, uh, I'm no longer going to be doing any brand deals with Twitch for the foreseeable future. So I'm working on trying to figure out a way to make that smooth over, over with McDonald's. It's <laughs> a very serious it's a very serious issue, a very big mistake that I made, um, and I am Which one? absolutely <laughs> in the doghouse with that. And uh, and it was uh, it was like it was an honest mistake, but you can't make mistakes like that when you're working with some of the world's biggest brands, you know. <laughs> um, and I found up found out about it today, and I had a couple calls. Um, there's just not not it's it's really not good <laughs> it's really not good yeah it's really not good i got that from twitch drama news number 126 that was, that was it's pretty a great funny. podcast i'm listening to i love it <laughs> but that's why you need to support your you independent need to support media independent media not just us not just yeah. the talk show independent media you need to support media who does not take commercial corporate money you don't want people that take money from china you that's, gotta look at yeah. who's where's china it's coming out china is influencing a lot that's not a good thing because then you have people that can't say can't speak the truth to power that's why, why are you listening to these yeah. people and that Screw goes that. with your news organizations too you you mm -hmm. can't trust them if they're just taking corporate donations absolutely because they got to stay on message it's like this guy went totally off message yep <laughs> he was still advertising mcdonald's yeah. but Ooh. You well, can't. Hey, Whopper, you can't see. <laughs> it was pretty funny. It's, it's just, it's one of those. Things. He's he's looking at lists of words probably that he shouldn't, he can't say, and for some reason that Whopper popped up. Whopper, Whopper. That is, it's because it's the direct competitor. The Red uh, Robin one's not as egregious, but the Whopper one, it's their direct. It's the direct. It's their equivalent. It's this. Oh, it's painful. <laughs> Oh, man. At least you can trust our honest opinion about Red Robin. Yes, Red Robin's good, gl good gluten-free buns. You ready and to wrap it up? I believe so. Value so, for value. Yeah, on that note, please help us uh, to produce Healthy Talk Show by heading over to healthytalkshow.com slash support. Your financial contribution will ensure we remain unbiased, commercial-free, and will help us pay for things like rent and electricity. Our show is value for value. And we love it when you reach out to us. Our email is ask at healthytalkshow.com. Call us 509-878-3229 and healthytalkshow.com forward slash social for all of our social media links. We record Healthy Talk Show live on Mondays and Thursdays at 8 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. That's 3 a.m. UTC. Come join the fun over at healthytalkshow.com slash live. Love and light. Love and light.